Hey, um, so my name is David Blackman. Some of you might know me. I am the head of the Geo stuff at Foursquare. Uh, Foursquare has been working with OSM as maps and as data for a little while. Today I'm here to talk about a whole bunch of things. It's, it's going to be intense. Um, the talk started off as labeling OSM streets with Foursquare data. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about that. It didn't pan out so well. Spoiler alert. Uh, <laughs> The second half of this talk was OSM data in production, which really, the, the talk should have been OSM adoption in startup land. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. And from my point of view, the spoiler there is that's not working out so well either. Um, uh, this is also adventures in Nogis. Like, working with OSM data is kind of fun because you're cobbling together the tools, the community is building the tools. Um, it's such a, it's, it's its own unique data format that really needs uh, a tremendous amount of tooling on top of it. And this was an adventure to figure out what tools work. Uh, part of this is you know, reminding the community that, wow, the, the tooling is, is complicated. Um, and I was going to make a Paul Ramsey tribute slide, but I didn't. Paul, this is like Foursquare OSM frenzy. We're talking about a lot of things. Um, so a little history, a couple of years ago, uh, around the like Google Maps API kerfluffle, we decided that we were going to go with OSM base maps. Uh, we, we partnered with Mapbox. We've been loving the maps. We've been uh, updating them every year. This is the current look. Uh, I think it's really beautiful. It's got this like kind of papery thing. It's a little soft. It works very well with our color scheme. We absolutely love the amount of control we get over this map and the things that we can do on top of this base map. Um, we're really happy our maps link out to a page on Foursquare.com that is uh, Foursquare styled and it's in our tone and it talks about what OSM is and why you should contribute and it goes straight into ID from the map area that you were looking at. Any map on Foursquare.com I believe should go straight to ID. Um, we were really excited. Uh, Oh, good, you can't see that. Um, we were really excited that uh, randomly we turned this on. We, it was just something we really wanted to do. And actually, uh, we saw higher adoption. We saw higher click-throughs to OSM from Foursquare as a result. Um, uh, I was going to try and do my like parody of a parody of a, of a JFK accent, but I decided not to. Uh, I, I thought long and hard about this. It's my, my mental image of JFK is from Clone High. Does anyone remember? Um, <laughs> Uh, but really, this was like, so we, we love OSM, and, and what can we do for OSM? Um, so we have this brilliant idea, let's try and label streets. So we know that what's happening in OSM is people are tracing streets from satellite data and not entering roads because you need to be on the ground to know what the road names are. Um, so we started, we started by seeing, can we really do this? And, and we thought we could. Um, the red lines here are unlabeled streets. The blue, the very faint blue lines are labeled streets, and the black dots are four square POIs. So this is a large chunk of Brazil because Brazil has a lot of Foursquare adoption. It has a lot of OSM drawing, and actually the street labeling is an issue. Um, here we're drilling down into a city, and sure enough, you see what you expect to see. It's like a heat map of urban activity, right? So Foursquare POIs and OSM data kind of aligns. You actually like you see a lot of dots along these blue thoroughfares that are labeled, and it really falls off as you get to the red. So this was kind of disheartening. Um, we can kept looking, sure enough, like we just weren't seeing the dots where we wanted to see them. Uh, here's a really stark example. This is in a smaller town in central Brazil. Um, it really falls off as you get into the red. Um, additionally, when we really did try and do this, uh, it turns out to be a crazy data problem. So there's a bunch of different issues. Uh, I, I do like the fact that this, this chart shows we obviously are trying to relabel that blue street, Menino Marcelo, right? Like, okay, great, we got the main thoroughfare. Darn, awesome. Um, but we have this issue of these, these dots are really noisy. They're kind of all over the map. You need to, you need to attach them to possibly at least four different street segments. Um, you need to learn all of the local street stop words so you don't label every street rue, or you don't label every street street, because that's the most common word that's occurring against it. Um, you need to fix up architecture that once you've attached a point to a different street, you take it back. You, you don't attach it to any other street. Um, and our data is, just like OSM data, our data is kind of noisy, right? Um, we, we see the same street on, on wildly different blocks. Um, you also see in Brazil, uh, in this town I was looking at, you saw a lot of shift. Um, I don't actually know if this was satellite, um, if this was satellite offset issues, Foursquare offset issues, coordinate systems, um, but you saw all, this, all the points being halfway towards the next block. So if we weren't careful, we're going to be labeling the wrong street. So street labeling. We thought about it. We're, we're trying really hard to figure out what we can do with Foursquare down. OSM didn't work. Next idea. 
we built this tool called Zeta Shapes. It's US only, and the idea is that you can you can build neighborhoods out of street blocks. And we it's US only because the US has tiger blocks. So we're like, okay, great. We're going to um, we're going to do OSM blocks. And everyone loves to do this, right? You're like, you take the OSM data, you feed it to the polygonized function, and then you get OSM blocks. But the issue is you get holes um, because OSM is not uh, perfectly topological because there's issues where the points don't perfectly line up. You get these holes. We spend a long time trying to fill in these holes, and every approach we took totally failed. Um, we tried to, one, just take this small chunk of the map, this chunk in yellow, and repolygonize it. And if you take this small yellow chunk of the map and repolygonize it, it works perfectly for reasons I do not understand. Um, we tried to uh, we tried to take every street and effectively renote it, so take the entire streets uh, and do the, like the n squared comparison, where we would take every street, intersect it with every other street, cut the nodes, uh, adjust the endpoints, and then write through. That was very slow and did not make a much better map. Uh, we tried to dissolve all the shapes and then take the inverse of that. Also made the Geos library explode. I didn't feel so bad because if you go back like three years ago and look at Michael Magursky's maps of doing the same thing, uh, you can see holes there too. Uh, like over by the water, there's like gray holes. Um, you can see all my failed attempts uh, in the Zeta Shapes repository to make OSM blocks. We're like building a building an R tree, and we're like trying to renode, and we're doing like a million intersections and buffering things, and it's like not working. Um, we're not yet doing this, but this is something that we're really excited to do. We are currently for commercial data, surveying our users about whether or not they agree with that commercial data. So this is neighborhood data. Uh, do you agree? We really want to start doing this when we have some time for our open neighborhood data, and and we believe these will basically be points that we just give away. Like you'll have a label set points with neighborhoods like you guys go you know run alpha shapes run beta shapes like we'll do our own stuff but we're going to try and release a set of just labeled neighborhood points as we go forward um uh you, you know this person's ashamed that grant that urban affairs is in the village so okay at this point we're like we're coming down to the wire we're coming to osm and we're thinking all right we're just gonna get back to our roots foursquare cares about coarse geocoding you've, you've seen me talk about two fishes before and a couple years ago i came and said you know what like we'd really love to be doing more with osm and two fishes and this was the year we said yeah we're going to do it um so uh, why is geocoding or reverse geocoding important to Foursquare? Kind of obvious to most people, but uh, we want to, when you like enter a new city, your phone tells us the lat long you're at, and we want to give some name to where you are, and we want to understand the extent to where you're searching. So when you land in Washington, we say, welcome to Washington. And the only way we can do that is if we have some sense of the size of Washington. Uh, additionally, we want to understand when you're doing a search, we want to understand the extent that we need to search, right? If you didn't know that Brooklyn Heights was roughly this area, this search might look a little different. We're already pulling out into Manhattan, but if you had no idea what Brooklyn Heights looked like, you can imagine that Manhattan would really overwhelm those results. So understanding the extents of places is important for a lot of different parts of our business. Um, so we decided we were going to finally do this thing. We're gonna, OSM has this amazing boundary data. We're going to pull it out. So the first thing we did was we need to extract shapes from OSM. Um, so we take client data client latest OSM PBF and we extract the shapes. Uh, okay, so we tried to do this with Ogre to Ogre. Ogre to Ogre chokes, it completely makes your machine not work if you run it on planet latest. Um, it doesn't support certain types of multi-polygons, so you need to tell it, take all the multi-polygons and actually make them separate features, and then later you need to run another script to put them together. It also doesn't repair. So SM has this issue where very often the dots don't necessarily line up next to each other, and so you need something that comes back through and repairs it. Um, also, it like all these things would periodically take down my colo in Canada because they'd be using so much RAM that then the machine would stop responding. I'd be like, oh my god, someone needs to get to Canada and like reboot this server. All this stuff is super memory intensive. Uh, OSM to GeoJSON is in Node. It looks great. It's so maintained. It's like part of the X API API. It just like runs my machine out of memory. I gave it like 8 gigs. I gave it 12 gigs. I think at some point I'm hitting some like Node 64-bit limit. It won't like give it more memory. OSM to GeoJSON does not work. Uh, there are two different utilities called OSM to shape. Uh, and then there's like four forks of them as well. There's two totally different ones. And then there's like forks of the one that comes out of the Geofabric guys. Um, they, are, they are completely impenetrable. They're in C. They have like the syntax file is actually just C that gets like included with it. Um, uh, and they also don't quite have the mapping we wanted. At the very end, we found OSMJS, which I was very suspect of something that has JS in the name. But this is an amazing tool. Uh, I've, I've <laughs> um, it, is, it is totally amazing. It, it, uh, you, feed it, you feed it data, and you tell it what mapping you want. And it really, unlike a lot of tools, it really puts shapefiles as a top-level concept. Like, and shapefiles are evil. They're as we find. It, it puts like bound 
boundaries as a top level concept. It really, really wants to be able to do like two pass repair. Um, it has a shapefile export library. It's great. It currently has a horrible recursion bug that I have not been able to fix. Uh, so we're doing other things for extracting admin level six, but it. Uh, it's been really amazing. Um, you can see the scripts for dealing with OSM polygons. They're not perfect. You're only going to make fun of me for how bad I am at, at osmosis at this repo, but it's there. Um, OK, so we want to give things away. Uh, so today, up on quattroshapes.com slash OSM is an extract of OSM. I mean, it's your data. It's our data. It's nothing super special. But as far as I know, this isn't downloadable anywhere else. It is um, our extracts. We've, we've gone through the pain of running osmosis and like crashing our kernel in Canada and figuring out which JavaScript utility to run. Um, it's all the admin boundaries from OSM extracted as shape files, uh, broken up by admin level with all the names on them. If you want to play with boundary data, like here's a really great set. And as far as I know, I, Geofabric doesn't offer these Texo doesn't offer these. Um, no one else is thinking, oh yeah, what we should really be doing is building admin extracts. Um, uh, we also extracted, OSM has a lot of POIs, and if you're not careful, that's another great way to run your machine out of RAM. Um, uh, I have no idea what's going on with these crazy ones that go zero, zero. But in general, we, we filtered down the, the POI set to just POIs that either have a Wikipedia page or mention a website, which sometimes gets you Papa John's. Um, but overall, it gets these amazing parks, and then sometimes you're like, oh, wow, there are these countries, or like half the country is a park. Um, uh, this is big in South America, and usually you can see more of Africa normally. So the, there's a POI extract as well. So if you're interested in POI boundaries, like the Hoover Dam, and like the Footprint of the Empire State Building, and all the parks in the world, you'll find a lot of that in this data set. Um, uh, this is the admin 2 data set. So this is like all the states in the world um, extracted. Uh, amazing. I don't quite know what's going on in North, uh, Northwest, Northeast Africa, but you know, it'll get fixed, I'm sure. Uh, this is the like, this is getting down to like admin level 7, I think. So this is going down to cities. So oh my god, there's so much data here. This is like blowing my mind. Like you can't even really pay for this data. Like you cannot, like if anyone, I've been looking for years for a set of city data and we still haven't even figured out someone who will sell it to us. And it's in OSM. It's amazing. Um, there are all these hilarious things that don't work. Like um, this is uh, this is a feature that never managed to complete itself. So if you really wanted to, you'd need to union this with the coastline boundary. But the more I thought about that, you technically don't know which way it goes, right? You could be like, oh, actually, this province takes up like 99.9% .9 of Asia. Um, uh, we haven't gotten that far yet, but uh, it, it would be nice to clean these up. Um, OK, so we extracted all these shapes. We have these cool shape files that are online. The next thing you need to do, the next thing that's nice to do is to match these shapes. So one thing OSM doesn't really have is a great sense of hierarchy. Uh, we use the Geonames Gazetteer like a whole lot of people because the Geonames Gazetteer understands like Rigo Park is in Queens, is in New York City, is in New York State, is in the United States. So it's just nice to get the OSM data matching to Geonames. So what we do now is we um, we read in all the geonames to a temporary Mongo database. And then for each of the shapes that come out of OSM, we figure out what geonames features fall within it. We do some name matching. We figure out if the like types match. And then we output we output those shapes to a, ge to a database that we can reverse geocode against. And we also um, output the mapping. So in addition, those, those shape files I mentioned on Quattro shapes also include, where possible, matches to geonames, if that's interesting to people. Uh, one weirdness is they are OSM ID tagged, but OSMJS sometimes outputs node IDs as the ID for role, for ways and relations. I don't know why it does that. Um, so not everything is in geonames. Um, not everything has good names in OSM. Um, not everything is as clean as it should be. So we got all these failures to match. Uh, and at this point, we just say, OK, we're just going to take these features and we're going to create them as new entries in our, in our gazetteer, and we'll, we'll We'll figure out later what their parents are. Um, uh, the data in OSM is not perfect. And, and one thing I wanted to, to mention that we've really struggled with is, uh, and, and Ian will tell me, we're, I'm just barking up the wrong tree, that we shouldn't be trying to do boundaries in OSM. Uh, but they're there. Like, they're there. We need to figure out what to do with them, because there's all this amazing data. It's really hard to edit boundaries in OSM. You can't do it in ID. You can't even edit names in ID for, for a polygon feature, because you're too zoomed out. You need to like zoom all the way in and find the center to do it. So this is an issue where the name I, I don't know how long ago this happened, but people just put in both names rather than rather than structuring this as one's the English name or one's the international name and one is the Arabic name. They just put them both in there. So when we were trying to match to find Casablanca, we we're like, no, like there's nothing named like that has Arabic and English. Like this is crazy. Um, so I think this has been kind of a bane. But the data is amazing. Um, oh, I was going to point out it, it draws on the map like this too, right? So we and I, we actually saw a ton of data where there's this um, there there are two different languages in the name. 
Uh, if you try and edit it, it, it complains zoom in to edit the map. And this like drove me crazy, because all I wanted to do was clean up the names of every administrative boundary in the world. Um, <laughs> It's true. Like the, there's a, there's a finite number of them. Like like streets are crazy. Like POIs are crazy. But like admin boundaries is like a countable number. Um, so next thing, like I said, is you need to fix up the parents, right? So if we create a new feature for Casablanca, we would have no idea like what country that was in or what state that was in. So you need to fix up the parents. This is what apparently family counseling looks like. This is kind of Google. Um, <laughs> so I like that, right? Uh, so at the very end, you fix the parents. You take each feature. If they had no parents, if they were created from OSM data, we go and we look back at our at this reverse geocode database we created. We figure out what polygons it's in, and we give it a hierarchy of parents. And one thing I don't mention here is not only are we importing OSM data, we're also importing the Quattro Shapes data, which where we tried to do a combination of crowdsourcing uh, administrative polygons and also other government polygons. And we're also importing uh, US neighborhood data that's been opened up. So all that stuff gets mixed in here. Um, and, and then we're done. Then we get the geocode. It totally works. These are OSM sourced features. It says that the source is from OSM. They are so beautiful. They look so good on the map. Um, they, I, I just I just love to look at that. I'm like, I'm so impressed there's all this amazing data. Um, yeah, so again, OSM source, this is Casablanca, great, you can search on it, maybe we've matched it to something, awesome. Um, there's a demo online, you can go to osm.twofishes.net and you can play with this data source. It is far from perfect due to all the obvious issues I mentioned. There are conflation issues, naming issues, extraction issues, there's some chunk of West Africa that's just like missing. Um, but the other cool thing is there's a downloadable index. So if, if you like this product and you think that uh, you know internally you want to do high high throughput reverse and forward geocoding at this like administrative level. Great, go down the index, run internally, run internally at Foursquare. Um, we we spend a lot of our time maintaining this package, and we hope you will too. I think this is really unique. There are lots of geocoders out there, but but you guys get to download the index. We've we've done the hard work for you. Um, but there's a but. Uh, and the but is, I don't, the but's the license. The but is, I literally don't think we're going to use any of the work you just saw. Like, I am still not comfortable using any of this in Foursquare as a commercial product. And as far as I can tell, this is the same reason why other big startups are not actually using OSM data. Uh, I don't speak for Foursquare. I have friends at Twitter. I have friends, or I, sorry, I do speak for Foursquare. I don't speak for Facebook. <laughs> I don't speak for Twitter either. Uh, and Evernote comes from a blog post they actually published a couple years ago with Mapbox, where they called out specifically um, that they were still concerned with the license. They were still concerned with the virality of the license. Um, Lots of people are on OSM, Forest Grows on OSM, Evernote, Pinterest, Craigslist, GitHub, amazing companies on OSM. But these are not the companies who care about the quality of OSM data to some degree, because all they need to be able to do is draw the map. Like, if, if the map looks good enough to put data on top of, like, looks okay enough, that, that's good enough for them. Um, when the map is a really static thing, it's not nearly as interactive as when you start to drill down to dealing with the data. There's this amazing data, like, dynamic things you can be doing GIS work on top of, you can be building systems on top of, that is still tied up in this license. Um, so real quick, in the fact, and I always, I always read these, is, is Steve here? He's going like, to totally ring me out later for this. Um, if you, so this is part of the guidance that the, uh, that the foundation provides. If you publicly use any adapted version of our database or a partial extraction from it or works, such as maps, produced from an adapted database, you must also offer that adapted database under the ODBL. So it's not the text of the license. This is like part of the human readable guidance. Um, so this says to me, OK, like you probably can't you're probably going to infect a database that you geocode, is what this says to me. Later it says, if you publish a set of OSM data as a file or database with separate files or databases as a collective database, and it, shares, it states that share alike does not apply to the other parts. So you could maybe imagine this world in which you have kind of like two files or two tables, um, and one of them is like your things, and one of them is the, is the, is the OSM data, and there's just like a tenuous link between them. Um, this strikes me as really... Uh, it, it's, it's a tenuous connection. It, it's almost like these, these licenses don't really acknowledge what databases actually look like. Like, just because you join, like, if you were joining them as part of the serving process, like, that should really be considered the database. I, I find this very disingenuous. People are like, oh, just have two different databases with, like, an ID between them. But really, the database is, is the database. It's the collection of data that, that I'm working with. Um, like I said, here's the quote from Evernote in 2012. They were concerned about this. Mapbox is concerned about this. You guys can hear Alex talk about this shortly after me. Um, and you know, Mapbox probably spends way more time thinking about the OSM license than I do. At some point, the lawyer at Foursquare was like, just, we're not, just, just stop harassing me to read the ODBL with you again. Um, 
so so Foursquare, I, I wanted to like take a step back from Foursquare for a second and just be like, so one of my buddies is doing a photo sharing startup and he wants to reverse geocode the photos. And he was like, what can you do for me? I was like, well, I'm about to publish this index with all this awesome OSM data, but you're going to need to figure out the license. Like you're going to figure out if you're infecting your photos, if you're infecting your user database. And he was like, that doesn't sound like fun to me. Um, you know, it, it does sound kind of crazy. Like obvious, obviously, um, if you say reverse geocode photos, you know, oh, this photo is taken in Washington, D.C., this photo is taken at the Capitol, obviously the photos don't become CC by. But, you know, the metadata kind of does, right? Because if you don't, it might be a hole in the license. You might end up doing this. This is Flickr alpha shapes, right? If you say that kind of the, the derived data is totally free for all, then you could like reconstruct the original database from it. And maybe that's not an issue because if you do reconstruct the original database, that's, that's not allowed. That, that's still, if, if you do something totally legal to reconstruct a complete copy, that's still not legal. But the guidance still makes people really scared. Like companies are still really afraid to touch this data. They're still concerned about the virality. Maybe, you know, like I said, maybe it's not an issue. Uh, but we do need better guidance. Like, uh, part of the reason I'm here is to, is to remind you guys that, like, semi-big companies that are commercial entities that want to make money and want to make money from geographic data are also really interested in having their engineers, like, work nights and weekends on OSM, and they're very concerned about the license, and it's up to the community to try really hard I do think this is one specific use case that comes up over and over and over, and there's extremely little guidance around this. Uh, the fact mentions geocoding maybe once or twice. Um, and it never actually enumerates down to these like what are considered kind of reasonable use cases. I, I continue to understand that the concern is that by opening the license further, uh, commercial entities won't contribute back. But I do think there are ways to make to keep the spirit of the license, which is make sure you're contributing back to OSM without making people scared about virality. Um, Download the index, uh, download the shape files, play with them, continue to edit, um, and continue to come talk to us. And we'll continue to try to use OSM data in production because we really want to. We're just so scared of the license. Thank you.